Hey guys! I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be recommending some mangas. Now, I used to read mangas a lot. I've probably read at least over a hundred in the past few years. So, I decided to narrow down my recommendations to mangas I have physical copies of and mangas that also have an anime adaptation. So if one of these mangas that I'm going to recommend to you today sounds interesting, but you're not really a manga person or you just don't really feel like reading it, you have the option to check out the anime instead. I also want to let you guys know in advance that I'm not going to be saying any of the author's names or the artist's names because they're just too hard to pronounce. If you want to know more about these mangas, I will leave links to their Goodreads pages in the description box below. The first manga I'll be recommending is number six, and this is a fairly short series. There's only nine volumes in total. This series is about a boy named Xion who is an elite student in his city, number six. And he and his mother are living pretty comfortably until one night he decides to help a fugitive named Rat. And a few years down the road, strange things seem to be happening. People are literally dropping like flies. And when it seems like Xion knows too much, Rat has to step in and help him escape. The whole series pretty much revolves around Rat and Xion's relationship and how they solve the mystery of what's really going on in number six. This manga can be very, very cute at times, but it is intended for an older audience, about 13 years or older because there is blood and gore and a lot of death and destruction. I originally watched this as an anime and fell in love with it and that made me want to pick up the manga series. This manga series is really good for anyone who loves mystery and suspense. The next manga I'm going to be recommending is kind of an oldie, Card Captor Sakura. I believe this anime series came out around the same time as Sailor Moon but I didn't know about it back then, probably because I was obsessed with Sailor Moon. So I was kind of late to the game of watching this series. It is also very hard to find physical copies of this entire series. I think I only have six or seven. Yeah, I only have six volumes of the series myself. But for those of you who don't know, this series follows a girl named Sakura who is in elementary school. And one day when she's doing chores around the house, she finds this magical book and accidentally lets loose a bunch of magic cards that can come to life and wreak havoc in the city. So it becomes her job to track down and collect all the cards again. Of course, she doesn't do this alone. She has Kiro, the guardian of the cards, and her best friend Tomoyo to help her. I have to say that this is probably the cutest manga series I have ever read. And it has some of the most amazing artwork. I really recommend this series for everyone because even though it can be really girly, there is also a lot of action and adventure that takes place. And if you want to watch this anime, I would suggest watching it in Japanese. They do have subtitles that you can read while you're watching. And this is mainly because the anime is only completed in Japanese. It only goes so far in English. So if you want to see it all, you're eventually going to have to watch some of it in Japanese. The next manga I have is The Prince of Tennis. This is the manga series that got me addicted to sport theme mangas. This series follows a boy named Ryoma Echison, who is 12 years old and is playing tennis against boys several years older than him, and he's kicking tail while doing it. When it comes to the rules of tennis, he is a big exception. He plays in age restriction tournaments with kids that are at least three years older than him. And as a first year in his middle school, he ends up making the varsity team, which is basically unheard of in his school. I think my favorite thing about Ryoma is the fact that he's just so calm and collected, especially when he's playing tennis. And this normally really aggravates his opponents because let's be honest, no one likes to have their butt kicked by a kid that's three or four years younger than they are. I really don't think you need to know anything about tennis to truly enjoy this manga series because the author does a really good job of explaining everything that you really need to know about what's going on. I knew absolutely nothing about tennis before I went into this book and I had no trouble understanding it. This is also a manga series that I'm having a lot of trouble getting physical copies of because it is an older series. If you want to watch the anime, you're gonna have to watch the majority of it in Japanese. I believe only the first two seasons are in English. 
And believe me, once you watch those first two seasons, you're gonna wanna watch the rest of them. The next manga I have to recommend is Hayakuyu. And this is another sport-themed manga. This series is also ongoing, so I think only the first seven or eight volumes are out to buy at the moment. And of course, since the series is still ongoing, that means the anime is still ongoing. But I still highly recommend that you check out the anime because the artwork in this makes for some very creepy scenes in the anime that gives you goosebumps, but in a good way. This series follows a boy named Hinata who wants to live up to the name of the Little Giant, who got his name from being the shortest player on his team when he competed in the National Volleyball Finals in high school. So Hinata decides to go to that same high school where he is the shortest player on his team. But this doesn't really hinder Hinata at all. Even though he lacks the experience, he has amazing reflexes and a jumping ability that shocks everyone. I'm not actually 100% sure if you can even watch the anime for this manga series in English. I love Japanese voice actors, so I normally just watch any mangas I'm interested in in Japanese. Like Prince of Tennis, you really don't need to know anything about the sport going into the manga because they do a fantastic job of explaining everything. And once you get down the basics, it's very easy to follow. Next I have Skip Beat. This series follows a girl named Kyoko, who at the beginning of the series starts out as a very unextraordinary girl who lets herself get stepped on and bossed around by her childhood crush, Sho, who is a music idol. But one day, he takes things a little too far and severely pisses her off. And to get her revenge, she decides to get a makeover and joins show business. This is also another ongoing series. I think only 36 volumes are out at the moment, and I only own 33 volumes because I like to buy them in this nice bind-up edition. Each bind-up edition has three volumes in it. This manga series is very cutesy, but there are also some very serious and dark moments in it, so I'd recommend it for anyone who's at least 13 years old. But I really love this series, and I recommend it to anyone I know who loves manga. It's been a long time since I watched the anime for this, but I'm pretty sure it only consists of one season, and I don't know if they actually have any intention of continuing on with it. I really hope they do because the anime was fantastic. But if you watch the anime and you really want to know what's going to happen, I highly recommend you just pick up the manga series because, oh my goodness, I mean, it's such a good series and you don't want to miss out on anything. And the last manga I'm going to be recommending for you today is Loveless. This is an ongoing series, and I haven't really heard a lot of people talking about it, but I watched the anime for the series, and it just left us on such a cliffhanger that I couldn't help but pick up the manga series afterwards, and I'm pulling my hair out waiting for the next volume. The main character, Ritsuka, has a very fragmented memory, and this causes him to have a drastic personality change, where he used to be a very happy, outgoing boy with a lot of friends and not-so-perfect grades. He's now a straight-A student with no friends at all. And the death of his brother also causes his mother to become very deranged, and she is very abusive to him. But things start to slowly change, for the good and the bad, when an old friend of his brother's named Sobi comes into the picture. Sobi is helping Ritsuka try to find out who killed his brother, while also helping Ritsuka make some friends in school. The bad side of this is that Sobi comes from a hidden school where everyone there is tattooed with a name like Sleepless, Dreamless, Loveless, Beloved, and things like that. And only two people share the same name. And there are some like Sobi who are born with a blank slate, but can have the name of someone else carved into them. And I mean literally carved, like with a knife. And the school is coming after Sobi. So this leads to Ritsuka partying up with Sobi. That way he can fight off the other students with their magic powers. How these powers really work is not really gone into until later in the series. This isn't really a series I recommend for anyone who has a problem with large age gaps in relationships or if they have a problem with gay relationships because the main relationship covers both of those. And even though this manga series is very dark and gruesome and I really wouldn't recommend it for 
anyone under the ages of 16. This book still has a very cute aspect about it that drew me to the book in the first place, and that is that everyone innocent, as in everyone that hasn't had sex, has the ears and tail of a cat. I guess when you have sex, they just fall off? I'm not exactly sure how that works. But that was definitely the aspect that drew me to this manga series in the first place, and I loved it. I think there's 12 or 13 episodes of the anime, and I'm not exactly sure if they plan on continuing it or not, because I know the author is only able to come out with one volume per year. So it's a very slowly updated series. And it seems to get more and more complex as you go along. Well, those are my manga recommendations. I really hope this video helped you guys decide whether you should pick up manga or not, or what manga you should pick up next. If you guys have read any of the mangas I mentioned in this video, let me know what you thought about them in the comments below. And also, leave me your own manga recommendations. I'm always looking for a new manga series to read. Well, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!